I have a question for you. What is the meaning of the word community? Is it the person who has lived next door to you for over 20 years and never speaks to you and certainly wouldn't be available if there were an emergency? Or is it someone who may not even know you but if called upon would help? Today I'm talking with an urban dwelling nomad who considers people living on the streets in tents and vehicles part of her community. Who is your community? Hello Globies! You know, I have been bringing to you some very interesting people. Some people who those that are not in nomad life might consider homeless. But I'm interviewing someone today who's living in her RV, but she does not consider herself homeless. In fact, she told me if she had the opportunity to move into a sticks and bricks, she wouldn't. That's how satisfied and happy she is with where she's at. So you know what? Let's find out why she's so happy in an RV, often in a parking lot. Come on, let's see what's happening. Today I'm interviewing Kat, and Kat lives in her Class A. What year is your Class A, Kat? It's a 1989 Comfort Trendsetter. Okay. And Kat lives in her Class A and has lived in it for two years. So can you tell us a little bit about your lifestyle? Where you park? Where you Are you in an RV park? No. Um, I park on the street around the Oceanside area. I park in the parking lots when I can get away with it. Okay, some of them don't like us there because you know it's their property, which is okay. They're pretty nice about it. Okay. Um, I park wherever I can, usually near other RVs or near where I know other people on the street. And how did you happen to come live, come to live in your RV? Um, pretty easy actually. Um, I got sick. I ended up with PTSD uh, after the death of my daughter and lost everything. I lost my money. I lost everything. And so all I had was a Jeep and a very big 16-year-old grandson. So I sold the Jeep and got a 30-foot RV. So does your RV have a name? Yes, Miss Daisy. Miss Daisy. And how long is Miss Daisy? Miss Daisy is three So you said, Kat, that you were raising your daughter's son. Yes. In fact, you had two of your grandsons. Yes. And one of them, what happened? One went home to his mom because he was my, he's my son's child. And the other one, the big boy, was my daughter's. She had five. He's the middle one. Okay. And so you were telling me that when she died, you kind of had a breakdown. I fell apart. Well, that's understandable. But, um, because I had four people close to me who passed away in seven months. And having two teenagers, you don't always get the time to grieve like you should. Mm -hmm. And so basically I turned everything inside and it broke. So then what made you decide to buy the RV? Was it a choice or was it for financial reasons? Um, a little both. It was mostly um, I couldn't afford to pay rent because the rents are so high out here. Okay? And so I got the RV, which I bought with selling. I had a Jeep. I sold my Jeep and bought the RV. And that way my grandson would not be living on the street under a bush. So the name of your RV is Miss Daisy you were telling me? Yes, it's Miss Daisy, just like the movie. Okay. okay. She's old, broken down, a little rough looking, um, just like I am. <laughs> she needs a little work. So how do you sustain yourself out here? Um, I have um, SSI, 
which luckily I don't have a lot of expenses. My grandson's the biggest one. <laughs> but I really don't have a lot of needs. And you were telling me that you're happy. I'm absolutely happy. I have made a great many friends out here. Um, interesting friends. And most people, when they think of homeless, they think of drug addicts and, you know, criminals and that. Some are, some aren't. A lot of them are just people who fell into a rough spot in life, okay? And some of them are people who were on medications and ended up getting hooked on medications. And they're still on them and they're still fighting to get off of them. We have every type of person out here. We have university professors. We have doctors. We have, I think, a couple of police officers. Now, when you say out here, what do you mean by out here? <laughs> out here where we live on the street. Okay. Okay. We call it out here. It's because I call them two ways. I say there's the normals, which are the ones that live in houses and work jobs, and, and then you have us, which I call either homeless or nomads. Now, what do you consider yourself? I'm a nomad. You're a nomad? I'm a nomad. And why do you think you would never go back to a sticks and bricks? What is so appealing about this lifestyle? It's mobile. If I get neighbors I don't like, I start it up and move. Okay. Um, it's a perfect size for me. I don't spend all my time cleaning the house, okay, because it's smaller. I Nobody can tell me I can't have my dogs because I have two pit bulls. No one can tell me, oh, you can't have them because they're pit bulls. There's more freedom to it. And if I decide to take a road trip, I hit the road. Okay, um, another thing that makes me happy out here is the fact that the church ladies, as I call them, because they come from churches, they also come from the cooking lady, who that's how I met her. She pulled up one day with a whole bunch of extra food and was like, do you know anyone who can use it? And I was like, oh yeah, I'll go hand it out because that's what I do. They bring up boxes, bags, whatever food, and I walk around and I hand it out to people that are out here and are hungry, and they don't know where to go get food, or they didn't get enough food. And that's what I do. I walk around and I meet them. They come up to my RV and they'll be like, hey, Miss Daisy, has the cooking lady been by lately? Because they like her food. <laughs> Just so everyone can know, I'm the cooking lady. <laughs> I think I may change my name to the cooking lady. I really like that. <laughs> well, that's what I told them. It's because they all, you know, I always tell everybody, I'm a terrible cook. Okay? And so when I hand out the food, I'm like, I did not make this, believe me. This is from somebody who knows how to cook. <laughs> so what would you say to someone? Because you seem so content, so happy. What would you say to someone? Because there are people who say, well, she couldn't possibly happy, be happy. And the only reason she's saying that is because she doesn't have an option. What would you say to people who say that? They're wrong. I have many options. I've had many offers. Um, I've had people offer to rent a room for me. I've had people offer to rent me a motel room. Um, my sister wanted me to come back to Michigan. She was gonna hook me up with a farmer to get married, okay. She had it all arranged. She likes to play match right And my response was the same thing. No, I'm happy where I am. Because I have my friends. Um, I have my grandchildren are all over the country, but a few of them are here in Southern California, so I get to see them. Um, it's just a whole different lifestyle. Besides, it's too cold in Michigan. <laughs> so it's just, it's not a lesser life. It's oh, just no. an alternative or a different life. It's a different choice of life. A different choice. It took a long time for my sister to adjust to it. She was in a panic attack. <gasps> oh my God, you know. But then she finally realized, you know what? You're happy. You're doing okay. And I said, yes, I'm doing very well. And you were telling me that people out here, we were talking about community, and you were talking about how everyone here, you were saying they're your family, even if you don't like them sometimes, they're still your family. Could yes. you explain that? Well, we're all in the same position, basically. We're all surviving different things that went bad in our lives, went wrong in our lives, okay? So a lot of people don't realize that when you're out here, you make connections and you end up having a family. If I have, if anyone ever tried to do anything or harm me out here, right now I can look around here and I can tell you at least five people around here who would be jumping on them and saying, uh-uh, no, you don't touch her. Okay, I'm protected. Um, if I don't have food, I have I forget to eat sometimes, okay? And they will come by because they know I need to because of my health. 
they will come by and say, did you eat today? And they'll give me the devil if I have it. They bring me food. <laughs> did you have that when you were living in a regular sticks and bricks? No, not at all. Not at all. I lived there for 10 years and I knew one family that lived there and that's because they had little boys that played with my boys. Okay, otherwise, no. I didn't know anybody. And I, even people who said they were my friends and my best friends even, when my lifestyle changed, they disappeared. They changed phone numbers and they just totally disappeared. So you're happy, I guess we could say happy in spite of it all. I am absolutely content, happy, thrilled, and another thing, when I was living the normal life, I had lost touch with God. I mean, I still believed in Him, I still believed in Jesus, but I really wasn't thanking Him for the blessings I have in my life. Now, every morning I wake up and I thank Him, thank you, I've got another day, thank you for this roof over my head, okay, thank you for my family, for taking care of us, thank you for my friends out here. Thank you for the cooking lady and the church ladies and Mrs. B in particular, okay, from um, the Friendly Church. So what do you think, yeah. what do you think makes you more grateful now or joyful now? What, what do you think it is? Because I could have lost it all. Because I got sick and I almost died three times in the last two years. And he wasn't ready for me yet. He didn't want me to go up there yet, okay. So, um, I'm grateful. I look up and I see the sky and I'm like, yes, okay. Um, there's a couple hawks over here that I've adopted. They're mine, okay. <laughs> and um, the people help each other. Like right now, you have two people here, which I'm pretty sure the one never knew the other one until about two nights ago. But they're helping each other back and forth work on their RDs. Okay. You want to get that in a normal life. So a real community. It's a very real much a community. So you feel a sense of you're your brother's keeper in a way out here? We, yes, we help each other. Well, thank you very much, Kat, for Anytime. taking time out of your schedule. I appreciate it. And the cooking lady will be back. And I thank you for the, for the nickname. I appreciate it, the cooking lady. So the cooking lady is signing off on this episode of Glorious Life on Wheels. And thank so, you for the wonderful food. <laughs> you're welcome.